Hello, hello. Welcome to Courage Becomes Her, where we connect and share real life stories. I'll talk with women whom I love and I'm inspired by. Women who are experiencing life just like you and me. I'm excited for us to gather together and cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in life and work. I've just told myself, you're not creative, you're not creative. You know, we all get those messages when we're young, you know, uh, unless you're a natural born, you know, you're able to draw or paint or something. There's the critics that look at the little stick figures we're drawing and, and you start to believe, you know, that you're not creative. But I've come to believe truly that we are all creative and it's just a factor of giving yourself permission. That was Annette Palinat. Annette is a California gal. She's also a wife and a mom to an adult son and a dog mom to two rescue dogs, Dexter and Rosie, who are just super adorable. She also has over 25 years of executive leadership experience in the aerospace and healthcare industries and is an ICF certified executive coach with the coaching firm Building Champions. I asked Annette to join me for this episode of Courage Becomes Her to talk about stewarding ourselves well through discovering and nurturing our creative selves. I love this conversation with Annette. She is going to walk us through her journey of discovering creativity and creative play and how to intentionally nurture our creative selves. She talks about how her creative self-expressions have helped her to learn more about herself, how to process life experiences. She talks about how to address the insecurities associated with creativity, as well as how to give ourselves permission to explore our creativity without the pressure to be perfect at it or to make money from it. And it's just such a beautiful and rich conversation. So listen in to this wonderful conversation with my friend, Annette. Annette, thank you so much for joining me for Courage Becomes Her. I am just really, really excited about this conversation that we're going to have today. Thank you, Laurel. I'm so excited to be a part of this and I've enjoyed listening to Uh, your previous podcast guests. And so it's a, it's a privilege to be here with you. I'm excited to talk to you. Yay. Me too. I'm excited to have you, even though I twisted your arm a little bit to join me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So uh, just some get to know you questions. So where is home? Well, home currently and my happy place. We live in um, the central coast of California in Monterey, and we've been here for a couple of years. So loving this, originally Southern California. Yeah, Yeah. my fellow Southern California gal and central coast gal. So Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Mm -hmm. How about your Enneagram? Do you know what your Enneagram is? Well, of course, I looked it up because I know you asked that question. (laughs) And I would love to dive into this because I'm not an Enneagram expert at all. But I, this is probably not surprising to you, an eight. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken the assessment a couple of times and always show up as an eight. And it doesn't surprise me either when I read the description. (laughs) Yep. Yep. I would agree with that as well. Although I think as we'll talk about in our conversation today, I definitely see you as a very strong wing seven. So the witch okay. will make this conversation super fun, even more so. I don't know what that means. So yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. How about your love language? Okay. Uh, I didn't look that up, but um, I think it is quality time Yeah. and words of affirmation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely attest to both of those of us having really beautiful conversations together. So, so good. How about uh, best or favorite movie or show in the last year-ish? It's all trash. I kind of am embarrassed (laughs) to say that, but I love, uh, it's really embarrassing, but true crime and true crime and uh, reality TV. 
So give me a good uh, binge of The Real Housewives or uh, Who the Bleep Did I Marry or <laughs> Snapped or, you know, Forensic Files. Those are all, all right. you know. Uh, but also, uh, this is not so embarrassing. I love watching the great British baking show. Me too. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's often our uh, over dinner or after dinner uh, show together of Corey and I. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it because um, they are so kind to each other. It's not even com- competitive, right? They're yeah. just all of the contestants are rooting for each other. And it's like emotional you know when one gets thrown off everybody's sad it's just so different from the competitive maybe shows in the U.S. it's very different totally agreed yep yeah so true all right what has made you laugh or filled your cup metaphorically speaking in the last day or so I can't say specifically what he might have said that makes me laugh but my husband cracks me up and so every day I'll have a laughing fit so I have no um, idea what he might have said in the last day or so, but it definitely uh, he makes me laugh. And that I love. I love to laugh. And he takes me there and it's deep laughing. <laughs> that's so good. Oh, way yeah. to go, Kit. Definitely yeah. an awesome thing. I love that for you guys. How about current obsession in any genre? It can be a product, a food, a podcast, an app, anything. Uh, well, and you're a recent guest of yours, the adventurous woman. Heidi, yeah. Yes. So I, well, my obsession is uh, vibrant good health. So oh, okay. I'm on a mission yep. to, you know, think about how I eat and what I take into my body and movement and such. So she mentioned a couple products that I bought and now I'm drinking this uh, coffee with collagen in it in the morning and it's amazing. Awesome. And drinking this um, probiotic celery drink, you know. So okay, I yeah. appreciated that. I love good. those kind of leads on things like that. So vibrant good health is my vibrant good health is my obsession. Good, I love that. I th- th- thought you were going to maybe say your walks on the beach because you do yeah. get to have that on a regular yeah. basis, which I yeah. just love for you. Well, that's part of it. The movement yeah. is. And yeah, that's, you know, health and mental health. Yes. It's fun. Agreed. All mm-hmm. right. First concert that you ever went to. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you're going to know this band. Fog Hat. Oh, I have heard the name, but I couldn't tell you what they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't even, I couldn't like name Like 80s rock or 70s rock. Yeah, I think it's 70s. I, uh, it, I'm sure it was in the 70s that I saw them at the forum in, uh, in Southern California. I, I'm sure I cannot name a song that they sing, but that was my first concert. I love it. That's <laughs> super fun. That And that's what I love about this is it's like you, you know, some of these are totally obscure. And then there's others that are like, you know, like Diane's going and seeing the Beatles, like, oh, right? my goodness gracious. Yeah. It's just so yeah. amazing. So I mean, I've so seen good. some good concerts in my time, but that was the first. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. All right. Last one. Book that transformed your life. Yeah. So of course I knew you were going to ask this too. And I wish I had, I wish I could say that I have a book that changed my life. Um, and I really can't say that, but I can say books that have impacted me. And one of them uh, was a reference that are referred to by you. Um, Bittersweet. Mm. I love that book. Yeah. Um, really just thinking about, you know, embracing all elements of life, you know, yeah. and um, appreciating um, challenges and, and um, just looking at things. I don't know, I felt it was very grounding and realistic. And I loved that book. Yeah. And then another book that I was, I read recently, um, Talking to Strangers by um, Malcolm Gladwell. Gladwell, yeah. Have you read that? I haven't read that one of his. That's been on my list it, for a long time. It is really good. I I read that so quickly. Um, it's really uh, challenges you to think about the assumptions you make about people, mm-hmm. and the you know the 
trouble you can get into if you're if you're leaning into those assumptions. And um, so just really challenge it challenges me to just think that there's there's a human being behind uh, the person I'm talking to and just be curious and open minded and not not mm. lean on assumptions and and really trying to find out who people who people are. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Good. Well, I'll link both of those and I'll move that one up on my list higher. So, cause I'm, I'm a big Gladwell fan, but that one of yeah. his is not one that I've read yet. So, okay. So I invited you and asked you to join for today's episode because you have this beautiful practice of creativity in our, in your life that so much of us don't have. And I think we live in such a pragmatic culture that I would say really, truly doesn't value creativity and especially doesn't value creativity when there's not a, either a productivity element to it or a financial gain element to it or you know something in that realm. And so having a practice in creativity that you've had for a, a while um, just for enjoyment and to get to know yourself better is something that, again, is is so foreign to us. So I want for us to just chat about that and to be able to learn from you because I've learned from you and I know there's even more that you and I haven't talked about that I'm excited for us to talk through today. So let's start by how did you get started with kind of discovering your creative self? Yeah. So I think like the um, creative play is something fairly recent, like in the last 10 years, I would say. But prior to that, I've had a practice of writing and I was uh, reflecting on this in anticipation of our conversation. I've been writing for gosh, longer than my son has been alive. So let's say 35 years Hmm. on a daily basis, you know? And so that is something that is pure self-expression is very private. It is for me to just kind of work things out. Hmm. Um, So I, I love and appreciate writing. And I was actually thinking about, um, I have said for a long time, there's a a memoir in me. And, you know, I hope that happens one day, but I'm not Mm -hmm. no pressure. But I do a daily word count, you know, when I I write, and then I track how many words I'm writing. And um, I average about 500 words a day. So I crunch the numbers, and that's like 180,000 words a year. And the average novel is anywhere from like 70,000 to 100,000 words. So I have written many novels or I have That's awesome. many novels. Yeah. Uh, but I love it. So writing has been a kind of a long time way of being creative and expressing myself. Hmm. And then I don't know, I've just sort of felt a pull to do things and kind of always told myself, you're not creative, you're not creative. You know, we all get those messages when we're young, you know, uh, unless you're a natural born, you know, you're able to draw or paint or something, you know, it's like, uh, there's the critics that that look at the little stick figures we're drawing and and you start to believe, you know, that you're not creative. But I've come to believe truly that we are all creative. And Mm -hmm. it's just a a factor of giving giving yourself permission. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've attended retreats where we've done vision journals and I've taken classes on, you know, various mixed media things and have developed that into a a practice of doing these little, what I call curiosity journals. I try to paint and I, I do things with um, needlework, but it's all for me. It's all for me just to, it's, it's not something I kind of would display or feel confident enough to where I, I'm not really even motivated to kind of broadcast it, but it gives me a lot of pleasure. I love that. Yeah, that's so good. There, gosh, there, there's like five different questions in there to for us to dig into and talk about. 
let's first talk about kind of the how you got to the place of deciding like the writing part made sense but then the curiosity journals and the needling and you know things that you've done more recently like how did you discover those and kind of test those out versus say you know someone who does watercolors or mm-hmm. someone who does crocheting or you know whatever the case may be like what mm-hmm. what what did you use to kind of discover that and nurture that in yourself Well, I think you may have a belief that I'm, I've narrowed down to those things. So let me kind of shift a little bit. Okay. I'll try anything. I mean, yesterday, honestly, Laurel, yesterday I bought uh, from uh, the next door app. One of my neighbors was selling a uh, pottery wheel. So I went and bought a pottery wheel. So I'm going to start doing that. It's really just kind of whatever sparks my imagination. So Mm -hmm. the mixed media stuff that's probably I stumbled across that with you know doing vision vision boards or something you know but it's really just whatever captures my imagination I thought you were going to ask a different question is like how did I allow myself to be creative or what what sparked it I want to know that too so yes please yeah I mean I kind of feel I'd be curious to get your perspective on this I kind of feel that women start to be drawn or desire to be creative as they mature. That's just like when I think about the kind of people who are showing up for the retreats I go to Mm. or who are, you know, on these online classes, Um, it's women of a certain age, you know, like north of 40. And I just think people women start to get the craving to be creative, to, to create something. And um, that's certainly what happened to me. And I'm glad I gave myself permission and I still struggle with the legitimacy of it. Like when you asked me to do this podcast on this topic, I was like, wow, can I speak to that? Can I own that? Hmm. And um, I do embrace it. It's just, even just talking about this out loud is a little vulnerable, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. No, and the, I love and appreciate you sharing that so much because you're right. I think there is that piece for so many of us that it's like we do have that craving. I love that you will use that word craving. But one, we don't know how to give ourselves the permission. And two, we don't know how to work through what you said a minute ago of the whether it's insecurities of telling ourselves that we're not creative or someone has even told us that we're not creative in our life you know kind of working through those aspects of it so like help from your perspective and your story like how did you work through those how did you give yourself permission how did you work through the telling yourself you're not creative uh i th- I think I, I'm not, I don't know how to answer that question exactly, other than just kind of taking the, taking a step towards it, um, showing up for, I mean, I went to the first retreat I did was in Mexico with this woman who had a, a retreat center. Um, and there were like five of us that showed up for this retreat to do, I think, I don't remember what she called them, but like vision journals. And I thought, oh, I'm going to show up and there's just going to be a bunch of artists there. And it was a writing and journal creation workshop. And so I show up and it's people just like me. And it wasn't intimidating once I got there. So I thought, okay, I can do this. Even the writing part of it. That's the first time I ever read out loud to other people the things that I was writing. It was super powerful. I think that... um, Giving permission is a big deal, though. You you talked about it in the beginning of doing um, being creative, unless you're going to sell it or, you know, you're doing things that whatever you're going to give away. It's really for me, it is a absolutely there's no purpose in it. Like it's very unusual for me. Yeah, I'm kind of a driven person. I have, you know, even in my downtime, I'll be. I don't know, cleaning the house or doing something on purpose. This is pure entertainment, pure joy, pure escape. 
pure curiosity. Like, I don't know what's, what it's going to look like until I'm, I'm done, whatever I'm working on. But just giving yourself permission to do something that has no value isn't the right word, but no purpose is yeah. a big deal. Yeah, that productive element of yeah. like, quote unquote, something to show for it, if you will. Right. Yeah, I just, oh my gosh, I love that so much. And I think that is, it's so hard. We live in a culture that that is just the complete opposite of everything that we're told. So what I really appreciate about what you said is surrounding yourself with people who are doing it as well and mm-hmm. having like that supportive environment, that nurturing environment. And I think maybe that is the key for a lot of us who have that craving, but maybe haven't started is to, you know, find some sort of a community where that can, you know, kind of be nurtured in a supportive environment, in an environment where, because I love how you said like other women just like you or other people just like you, you know, so gosh, that's just so good. So Mm -hmm. good. So obviously, I know you said there's no purpose, but I, there has to be benefits to you. So talk about like, you know, okay, if there isn't, if there isn't this productive purpose necessarily, but what are some of the benefits for you? Uh, I will say I've learned a lot about myself through the process of being creative. And a lot of it has to do with my, um, probably all goes back to that Enneagram 8, you know, being a really driven, on purpose person, a bit of a perfectionist, like wanting things just so. One thing that I really love about the process for me is going through the ugly stage of whatever I'm creating. And this took me a while. Like I would um, get there and kind of give up on some projects. And when I stick with it, something amazing always emerges, something beautiful, at least in my eyes. Um, So what I kind of applying that to real life, I guess, is just kind of stick through it even through the imperfect, ugly stage, you know, to get to the other side where there's something beautiful or pleasurable or um, that brings you joy. That, it feels so good. Mm. It feels so good. Yeah, perseverance, stick to itedness. I mean, there, you and I have talked a little bit about that. Like that is such a huge metaphor for life of like how much we do have a tendency to, you know, give up when it is, in that hard space. And you know, one of my favorite phrases is the messy middle when it's in that the messy middle, like we give up there. So I love that you have found that parallel in your your creative play, your creative work. I know. And I love that term, the messy middle. In fact, I, when we talked earlier, I, I equated it to that. There is something about that. And just continuing to work something until you feel good, until you feel satisfied with it. For me, it's pushing up against perfectionism. Mm. And I don't, I've never gotten with any of my stuff to the point of where I think it's perfect, but I definitely have pushed past the ugly stage to a point Mm. where I feel so good. It just feels good. Mm. It feels satisfying. Yeah. That's that's a big part of why I do what I'm doing. So beautiful. Friends, I know you are loving this conversation with Annette just as much as I am, and I would love to ask you to just press pause real quick on this episode and text the link for this conversation to a woman who you know who could benefit from discovering and nurturing their creative selves. So just take a second to do that right now to a woman in your life. Thanks so much. So... I mean, you said that it's really self-expression, so really something for you, but you have done it kind of with others. Is it something that you prefer to do by yourself or do you like inviting others to do it with you? Like how, you know, if someone's thinking about it from, you know, is this an introvert thing, an extrovert thing, you know, kind of where do you sit in that, that space of it? I think I like to be, uh, first of all, I mostly create on my own. I have a little 
shed in the backyard and it's full of all kinds of art supplies, you name it, and we could do it in that shed. So I like to be alone and and do my thing. But I like to get inspired by other people. Mm. Um, so there are a couple of magazines that really have turned me on to different techniques and projects. What women create is amazing. And uh, Where Women Create is also a beautiful magazine. So like being inspired by other people mm. and then um, being in community is great. It's just, it's not often that I can do that, but I've attended, as I say, retreats and um, day long, you know, classes or something, but it's mostly on my own. Yeah. So good. Oh, I just, I love that so much. Okay, so you talked about for the writing that you write every day, you track your word count. So obviously, this is something that is a priority for you. How kind of how do you look at it in in that space of prioritizing it, making it important? You know, what what does that look like for you? Yeah, it just is important. And I need to make it a priority because I would say that is more like therapeutic than um, it feels good, but it, I wouldn't say it's as fun as, you know, playing with a paint set. It's more therapeutic. So I am writing, I, sometimes I don't even know what's going to come out of, mm. you know, my pen. It's uh, just about working things out and, you know, sort of, I can be really reflective or I can be writing about my dreams and desires or, you know, maybe uh, an argument I had with my husband the night before, like, you know, what is this about kind of thing. Mm. I know that it it helps me. And I obviously I've been uh, dedicated to this practice for many years. Um, when I don't write, I feel different. I feel mm. like I'm not in balance. Um, so it's it's important for me to have that time. So maybe it's like meditative, therapeutic kind of practice. But yes, yeah. it works. Yeah, mm, that's so good. How about the creative play in the mixed media? Like, is that something that you also have like a, a you know, rhythm and a routine around? Not as much as I'd like to. Um, and I probably still have a feeling of, you know, it's not producing something. So I, you know, and where do I steal the time from? But, you know, I find time for true crime. So I could find time to go out in the shed. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't go out every day. I don't, I don't do something creative every day, but I'll get in modes where I will, I will be doing it all the time, you know, okay. so it's, it's not as much of a, a practice like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense for sure. And I love how clearly seeing the pottery wheel on, you know, the mm-hmm. next door, like that brought inspiration. So there obviously yeah. are kind of inputs for you of different, different things that inspire you at different times and draw oh, you. Yeah. 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 I get excited that that magaz- the magazines that I refer to every issue I think they come out quarterly they're not monthly I will find something else to do that's how I ended up with the needlework and the curiosity books and the painting journal and I don't know it honestly I have uh, supplies to do something in every every type of artistic expression. (laughs) That's so good. I love that. So when we've used the word, you used it first, but I want to come back to it because you said creative play and Mm -hmm. that I just appreciate that so much. And I'm so intrigued by that because I think again, kind of this concept for us as women. And I think as you said particularly as we get older, like there's this craving for us. And I do find like this desire of craving, not just creativity, but play and playfulness. Mm -hmm. So I I really, I love that you use that word. So what, why did you use that word? Like how, what, what is the significance or meaning of that for you? I think it's probably again around permission. It's like going in just to play 
there's no expectation mm-hmm. you know just go have fun experiment to see what happens yeah so it's it's less serious you know it's not a task i'm doing it's this is my fun mm-hmm. so it is important because you know we as adults don't tend to play yes uh, yeah oh my so gosh permission so true yeah we do need we need to give ourselves that permission So you've talked about it. Uh, You have um, mentioned it, and and I said it in the beginning of just kind of this idea of monetizing, uh, you know, our creativity, you know, trying to make a business out of it or, you know, make money from it, that sort of thing. So you said you that's something that you haven't considered. You mostly kind of said that you haven't done that because you're not sure if what you produced would sell necessarily. Um, So kind of just talk through like that piece of it of, you know, if you were able to not be concerned about the product that you have, like, would you sell it? Or is that even if it weren't, you you wouldn't? Uh, There's probably a component. Well, there's a couple things. First of all, I just haven't thought about selling something, but if I did, some of the stuff that I've been creating takes a long time, right? So mm. uh, needlework, um, these little art pieces that you could hang on the wall. I mean, they take a couple of months, mm. off and on, a couple of months, you know, hours and hours and hours. Like I, I couldn't, what would I sell that for? And, and then I do think who would want it, but the, uh, curiosity books. I have given a couple of those away as gifts Hmm. and I loved doing that. I made one for my husband's niece and those take a long time too. They they'll take several hours over multiple weekends for me to create, but, you know, kind of picking a theme and pulling different things together. They're like these mixed media things. It's just, it's fun and having the intention and thinking about that person as I'm making it and then giving it to her, mm. you know, I've only done, I've only given away two very vulnerable even, you know, cause here's this little piece of art that I, I mm. love you. I'm giving this to you. It had the right response or the right impact, I think, cause it was a really lovely moment when she received it, but I can't, I can't imagine doing that and then trying to sell it. Maybe there's something so personal about it too, you know? Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I mean, it just takes me back to what you said in the beginning about writing of it just being this self-expression, sacred space. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's what it is. I mean, as I was saying it out loud, it is, it is so very personal. And so selling it just wouldn't make sense to me. And also, I don't think that I'm this fabulous artist, you know, that would, somebody would buy, but I think it's mostly... It is very personal. And it just, I mean, again, runs so opposite from our culture, but is so important for us to have, you know, that something in our life that is playful, is fun, has no expectation with it, because there is just so much expectation in every other part of our lives. So it's just like, oh, gosh, I love that. I do, too. And I think it's interesting because... um, So if I taught you how to do these curiosity books, the method would be the same, but the outcome would certainly be so different and unique. And so I think it's a really interesting thing in the realm of self-expression. You know, there's just a surprise as you're creating this. And I think that's probably when I was talking about it being so satisfying. I think that's probably what it is because you're seeing Mm. another layer of yourself through whatever you're creating. Yeah. yeah. And it feels, it feels really good. Hmm. Okay. So we, we both know based on our own lives, as well as friends, our coaching clients, that this is something that other people crave and desire to have as a part of their life. So what would you say to the woman who you know, wants to cultivate this or first wants to discover it, but, you know, and then cultivate, you know, creative play in some way or another in their life. Yeah. 
I would say just do it. Follow your curiosity. You don't have to be perfect. Just do it for yourself and do it by yourself if you are too self-conscious. But allow yourself that. Yeah, just give yourself permission. So good. And Mm -hmm. I think we overcomplicate that too, right? Like just, I mean, I can hear myself just beginning to analyze like that within my own head and and just being able to stop that train and just say, nope, like just, just try it. You're probably thinking I'm not creative. You know, that's what stops us. I'm not creative. Well, who, who, who's to say, Mm -hmm. and you don't have to show it to anybody anyway. So just play Mm -hmm. and figure it out. And there's so many different mediums you can you can get into there's so much on the internet you know there's plenty of um online courses you could just go crazy with all different kinds of things so just you know not listening to that voice that says i'm not creative yeah you are creative every everyone is creative yeah yeah that's so so good and you're right there are resources available to us like there never have been right Uh, such a rich time in history to be able to try out anything right right (laughs) yeah that's so good uh anything else that you want to share anything we haven't talked about to make sure we uh kind of let our our friends walk away with today i don't know if there's anything i'd add other than be prepared to every time you walk into a, a Blick art store or Joanne's fabric or Michael's, you know, to go out with a, a boatload of stuff. I <laughs> supplies. That's probably my current obsession is, you know, any kind of um, any kind of art supplies or craft supplies. Um, but just it is a really beautiful thing and it feels good and it is a way of you know, kind of soothing your soul and allowing Mm. yourself just to be. And like we talked about the word play, you know, we don't have opportunities to do that. So just give yourself that gift. I love that so much. Well, thank you so much. You honestly, truly have inspired me through this conversation to, you know, just kind of shake loose in some of those expectations and be able to, you know, say, just, you know, try it. And just, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> good. Oh, so good. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed connecting with you as always. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for our conversation. Mm, me too. I don't know how any one of us can walk away without feeling just inspired and encouraged to allow ourselves the opportunity to discover and nurture our creative selves. I'm so thankful for this conversation with Annette and her vulnerability to share this journey with us. I love so much how she talked about this idea of letting go of the need for perfectionism in her creative self-expression and being able to kind of just persevere and push through when something didn't look the way that she wanted it to or expected it to and just you know find that space to uh, allow that to to be and to not just discard that but to to push through it and that is such a beautiful metaphor for our life and when we do have to just push through the things that are messy and don't look great and we keep going and we find that energy that we need for the day. We find that confidence that we need for the day, the strength that we need for that day. I just really appreciate how she shared that with us and how each and every one of us can look at that of when we're in that messy middle space of being able to just not expect perfection, but just to be able to let it unfold as it is meant to and knowing that it's going to produce something beautiful, whether it's an actual creative thing or in our our lives overall. So, so grateful that you joined us for this conversation today. Thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from you about what it is that you're doing to nurture your creative self. What an honor to help you to cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in your life and work. Thank you so much for inviting me to journey with you. 
I look forward to being back with you next week where we'll hear another story from a woman whom I love and am inspired by and look forward to learning from. Thank you.